Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. A few weeks ago, we aired a program on the commission form of government, and we had a panel discussion with commissioners from across the state in different sized counties to talk about that form of government and its effectiveness. Well, today we're going to turn the tables and talk about the council form of government. And while council forms may be in the minority of governments across the state, they do represent a majority or at least a strong plurality of the population. So that's going to be our discussion today and we are going to start by trying to bring you up to speed on how a council works, how powers are divided and separated, and how they are modified versions of each. We will start with a report from Terry Wood. In court, a jury is often comprised of 12 people because it provides more diversity in the final decision and hence more fairness. That's the thinking behind the county council form of government in the state of Utah. Utah code was changed in 1972 to accommodate alternatives to the traditional three-person county commission. Councils function very differently than commissions. Councilman Jim Bradley of Salt Lake County is one of only a handful of people who have served as a county commissioner and a county councilman. There are several uh, obvious differences. One, uh, when you're serving on a commission, uh, there's three of you who make all the decisions. You make the decisions on how government functions and uh, all the executive decisions, which is actually providing the service to the people. You also set policy and you also set the budget. So you have all the powers that are, that are very, very important and indeed critical to the local government. Additionally, commissioners are responsible for literally managing the county resources and many departments that are not under the authority of another elected official. With the council form of government, and there are four types of council forms, the primary, and in some cases, the only responsibility is legislative. So we will say, here's where we want services to be provided and here's the money to do it, uh, Mayor, go do it. But we've got to make tough decisions. But from here, the different council forms that have been adopted across the state of Utah are very different. As an example, Salt Lake County and Cache County are the only councils in the state that have an elected executive who's directly responsible to the voters. In Cache County, his title is County Executive. In Salt Lake County, the citizens elect a county mayor. Mayor Ben McAdams is the only county mayor in the state. An important power vested in these two positions is veto power. A mayor or executive can veto something and send it back to the council. The council can override that veto if it has enough votes. Wasatch County and Summit County hire their executive or county manager. He functions much the same as a county executive or mayor, but he does not have veto power and he serves at the pleasure of the council, not the public. Grand and Morgan County have no manager, so the department heads who are not directly elected by the public report directly to the entire council. In this case, the council still has some executive responsibility placed upon them. It's taken some time for the idea of a council form of government to catch on in Utah. To date, only six of Utah's 29 counties have made the change to some form of council representation. The first being Cache County, which switched back in 1988. Grand County became the second in 1992. Salt Lake and Morgan both voted to change in 1998, and Wasatch being the most recent, switching in 2006. A handful of other counties have put the issue on the ballot, but the initiative failed to pass, and there seems to be a statewide ambivalence about the effectiveness of the forms of government. There is clearly a, a distinct difference between the commission form of government and the, and the council form of government. Uh, once again, reverting back to the commission form of government, very, very efficient, uh, but not necessarily transparent, and with only the possibility of only two of three people making a decision, and they can do it, uh, quite frankly, as, as quickly or as slowly as they want, and with uh, a maximum or a minimum of public attention to their, to their decision making. So now that the experiment has been in place around the state for a quarter of a century, how is it doing, and are there any regrets? That will be the topic of our discussion in our roundtable segment. Chad? Thanks, Terry, for that report. You now understand how councils function and their relationship to the elected offices between one another. When we come back, we'll get into the details of the council form of government with three people currently serving on councils in different capacities and one who's a former commissioner. 
Now, we are here on set getting wound up for a pretty interesting conversation, so you're going to want to stay tuned and get into the fray with us when we come back. Kanab, base camp for your southern Utah adventures. In Kanab. Along Interstate 70 and Highway 89 is an area that is rich with high mountain peaks, vast forests, lakes, streams, historical sites, and a climate that is perfect for outdoor adventure no matter what the season. Join us in Salina, Utah for a weekend of fun, food, and friendship at the Blast from the Past Car Show, July 26th. in the center of it all, Sevier County. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit CedarCityAYL.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today about the council form, the county council form of government. And we're going to pick up our conversation where we left off. Joining us for our panel discussion today, Lynn Lemon, who's the county surveyor executive for Cache County. Gene Chiris, who's a councilman for Grand County, and Randy Horiuchi, who's a councilman for Salt Lake County. And we'll just go right down the list. Uh, Lynn Lemon from Cache County. Okay, I think we were the, I think Cache County was the first county to go to a county executive, county council form of government. Uh, in 19, 1984, literally the citizens of Cache County voted to move from a commission form of government to a county executive, county council form of government. And that was precipitated I wasn't there during that period of time, so I can't tell you the exact history, but uh, I think the mayors in the county got together and they didn't know if, they didn't feel, I think there were some concerns about just having three different county commissioners and that being able to represent the entire county. But uh, regardless, the citizens voted to do that. And then in 1986, they actually voted for the county executive and the county uh, council members. And then our form of government started in 1987. So we have a, we have an elected council, seven different geographical areas of the council or the county are represented. Three of those are in Logan, two in the north end of the valley, north of Logan, two in the south end of the valley, south of Logan. And those council members are elected just from their geographical areas. And then the county executive uh, is, a, is elected at large. You guys have a different story. Uh, yes, uh, our county form of government, there's only one like ours in the state. Surprisingly, Morgan County has got almost exactly word for word the same as we do. We are a seven person council. This took effect back in the two, 1992. 91 they went through the process electing a new form of government. Uh, all the reasoning for that, the only thing I can say there was a lot of unrest at the time. There were some decisions being made uh, that addressed the road off of the Book Cliff Mountains. Uh, the citizens, I'm, I'm just going to say, was concerned about the expenditures of money and the three-person three, three person commission making all them decisions all by themselves and not the whole county as being representative. So they changed to a, a, a council, seven person. Our council has all of the authority when they set it up, kind of makes you wonder why, as, as a commission. We are the executive branch of the county also. So we have both legislative authority and we have executive authority. Mm -hmm. We do not have a manager or a, a you know, county executive either appointed or elected. We do have a, a council administrator that is hired. Uh, they used to be under contract. We changed it from a contract just to an employee type uh, position. Uh, and it, I don't necessarily like it. We're nonpartisan when they changed it. So you, you do not know who what party the person is running is, you know, there's, there's some hazards about you could get all, let's say, Republicans in there, or you might get all Democratic people in there. 
with the same mindset. You know, that good or bad, I don't know. But I do know, uh, to me, uh, under our form, the commission form of government worked better. Where a county was got 9,700 people in it, you know, we're not a big populated county. Right. And we also have a, a city uh, council, two of them, that uh, one of them represents half of that. So we've got a lot of people already involved in the, involved in the political <laughs> process managing 9,700 people, and, and it gets cumbersome. So. I think the council, the four more now, we have four districts, three at large council members, and the mayor is elected at large. I call it the knucklehead government because it really is just knuckle headed. Well, uh, <laughs> there's going to be plenty of time to talk about your opinions about it later on <laughs> the show. Um, I just want to get to that point. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll be right back with the county seat. If you're looking for the center of the universe, well, good luck. But if you're looking for the center of the off-road universe, look no further than Paiute County. Hundreds of miles of trails turn your day of riding into a week, maybe a month. Heck, a lifetime wouldn't be enough. And this coming August is the perfect opportunity to hit the trail and participate in the Paiute Trail Jamboree. Take off from downtown Marysville by ATV or UTV and ride the most famous destinations in the world. Explore Paiute County and discover the magic and beauty of the land where the rainbow ends. Why is it that environmental protection and economic development are often placed at odds with each other. Well, in Duchesne County, they have both. Here, modern industry and resource development go hand in hand with some of the most pristine wilderness in the western United States. A strong economy balanced with a lifestyle of exploration and discovery. But don't take my word for it. Go visit them. Duchesne County, close enough for business. Far enough, get away. What's the story of your life? What chapter are you on? Did you happen to get married recently? Perhaps you found your lost puppy at the animal shelter. Or you're taking an art class at the senior center. There's that flu shot that kept you well last season. And don't forget the museums and historical sites your family loves. And all the fun you have at the county swim center. County services from search and rescue to maintaining roads bring tremendous value to each of our lives. We're the Utah Association of Counties, helping you build the story of your life. Welcome back to the county seat. We are having a discussion today about the council form of government. So far, you've looked at the different forms of council governments, how they function, how duties and responsibilities of elected county officials are split up. How do the dynamics work? And basically, what we've done is we've taken 100% of the power, legislative and executive. In our case, we've handed almost opposite of the way uh, Councilman uh, Shatras has is that we've given that to the mayor. So. We've taken 100% of the responsibility and the power, given it to the mayor, and our only real, when you look at a legislative form, our only responsibility, frankly, is to do the budget. And in essence, we spend maybe two or three hours on the budget. That's all you spend? Yeah, basically, because we, we have things so highly uh, mechanized and scientifically done that when we finally get a budget spit out by the mayor's office, it's under a formula and so our ability to really change things and have an imprint of public policy on the budget is almost zero. The mayor does almost all the work. You know what? We we were actually doing that. I was actually as the budget officer. Yeah, no, and, and that's. I literally cool. prepared the budget, and for like 19 of the 20 years that I've served, I basically prepared the budget. But I think we, I think our council said we really want to be more involved in the budget. So last that's year. Great. Last year we literally, rather than me meet with all the departments and and present a tentative budget to the council, the council we the council met we had budget workshops Fantastic. we met with every department we went through the budget with the various departments there were pros and cons to that i don't want to say that it was all that it all worked it out great we should do but i do think it is something that allows the council to be more involved in the budget process because i think that was their concern they said uh, you the bring, you give us a you have. give us a budget it's already done it's already balanced uh, what are we really going to do with it? I mean, they, they certainly the council can change the budget. They can, they can do whatever they want to, but sometimes that's a hard thing to do if you get a b budget that's already mostly put together. So I think, yeah. I think that's yeah. one of the things that we really tried to do, as we said, let's Smartly. get the council more involved in the budget process. And I've and tried, of course, tried to do that, Chad, and yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. We're, we're talking budgets. Grand County, we are directly involved with, right. with the budgets. But, but under... Uh, a, a council form of government, well, elected government, 
actually the clerk auditor is the one who is, has a lot of responsibility for, mm -hmm. for the, the budgets. And how yeah, did you yeah. interface with the clerk well, auditor? Well, in fact, uh, that, that's one of the things I think we had to learn because under the, under the executive council form of government, the executive is the budget officer. Under the commission form of government, the, the auditor is the budget officer. And so I just tried to work really cooperatively with the auditor. Right. We just say, you know what? Randy had the same than issue with, with your a mayor, the fights that Pete Croon had mm -hmm. with the, the county auditors because yeah. that's substantial. Statutorily, they take that oath of office. They take that oath of office for the auditor. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you a question because we're talking budget, but I mean, all you councils pass ordinances. Here's the problem. The ordinances we pass are we use to manage county government. So we're passing ordinances on ourselves on how we can proceed. On how you can do how business. You can proceed. Yeah. And so it's just, we, we don't pass ordinances really for, and the only ordinances we pass that have uh, sort of legality are ones in the unincorporated area because that's, that's where we're the primary governor, government. But Salt Lake City, Collin Heights, they have their cities that do their ordinances and that sort of thing. We have a small unincorporated area of 200,000, which is a lot of people, but... Yeah. but well, if there's a good point to that, Grand County has both responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The problem, I, as I see it with Grand County, we just have too many people sitting up there at the dais. There are seven people sitting there. You're trying to pass, do administrative business. You're trying to pass legislative, you know, ordinances, rules. That Chad, let me give you a good example. Okay. You know, the last four years of the commission forum when Commissioner Overson and I were together. Uh, we had Commissioner Bradley for part of the time and we had Mary Callahan. Uh, but in those four years, we did more in those four years. You could take the four years we served there, we did probably more stuff, good stuff, than they had done in 60 years previous to our serving. Because we, we literally did 60 years worth of good stuff. This is like you mean for. paving roads and, oh, and, just and getting, making improvements? Yeah, and building parks, building children's museums, and handsome planetariums, building a new jail. I mean, doing stuff for the people. I can tell I'm probably in the minority here, but actually I think our executive council form of government has worked pretty well. I mean, I, I, and, and again, we're probably the oldest and maybe uh, more mature, but Honestly, I think we've been able to do a lot of good things. And, and I hear, I don't want to say that the other forms of government are not good. Uh, I've never said that. But I think ours has worked well. Now, I never worked in the commission form of government, so I don't know that. But I think we've been able to get things done. And I actually like the separation of executive authority versus legislative authority. I think, and we've been criticized sometimes. People say, well, you can't get anything done. It takes too long or whatever. But... I actually think there's a value in saying, let's think about this, let's get more people involved in the process, let's get more minds uh, making a decision rather than, one of the criticisms we had, Randy, uh, frankly, with our commission form of government, is that two commissioners could get together and they could make decisions and there'd be thing. no, there'd be no it, public debate. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> and and I, 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 let, me, let, me, let me just say this, you're right, but you know, all the things you said about in terms of inclusion, it's a state of mind. If a mayor or a council wants to be inclusive and try to do things, and that, you know, that's sort of the way I think I am, and some of my council members are, is we, we try to include people, we try to govern by consensus, so there, and we have plenty of hearings, and, you know, but I, but I just think that it's, uh, I mean, the, the separation thing is really you, you struggle. I've actually thought it is, I, th I think it's healthy, so maybe there's just a, I mean, I'm, uh, I think it's worked good to have uh, legislative responsibilities and administrative responsibilities. And certainly, there are, one of the things that can really make that a mess is if the, the two don't work together. Now, there are some if people the, that think Washington is working well because they can't pass anything. And so, uh, yeah, that's a, Washington's a good example. <laughs> well, I've tried very hard to work cooperatively with our council. I really have well, tried Lynn's, hard. Lynn's really a yeah. I mean, I, yeah. but, but again, I realize, I, I hear what Randy says. I, I understand that. But... Uh, like, I don't want to make it sound like nobody's ever uh, disliked our form of government because we have people, and initially in the early stages, had people all the time say, we want to go back to the commission form of government. But honestly, I haven't heard that much over the last 10 or 15 years. We just went through a process a couple of years ago. To, to, to go back? To go back to the form oh, of government. So did, did it you It didn't work election? out so good. 
Okay. <laughs> well, I said that. It, it, the only thing it did, we finally got a petition from the citizens to study the form of government. It got put on the ballot and it was voted down. So apparently there's a still a big contingency who wants to keep it in an uproar. I want to follow up on this topic of uh, where to go from here or where you would go from oh, here because I know some different opinions. So we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more of the county seat talking about the council form of government and how this experiment has worked over the last two decades. I'm a Utah's own dairy producer. I care about the health of my animals and I care about the quality of food we produce. Because when it comes to providing quality dairy products, I understand the importance of Utah grown and raised. And the jobs we enjoy are vital because Utah's own supports our communities. As a consumer, I look for Utah's own products because Utah's own is good for me and it's good for Utah. Keep it here at home, Utah's own. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. Welcome back to the county seat. You know, during the break, our conversation has been lively and continuing. We're going to go back to the conversation right now. The issue is the way to solve this is to probably increase the size of the county commission. Not oh. change the form, but add a couple more commissioners. So, so there's better representation. There's better, yeah, exactly. So you can either do a districtized representation or whatever, and then you, you spread out some of the duties and the responsibilities because what is a commissioner I mean I I would spend I mean the taxpayers got a great bargain with me I mean I'd spend 80 90 hours a week being a commissioner yeah. all Randy, three of us did do you not see any value in having executive and legislative separated none because Zero. that was I think that was one of the concerns in Cash County is that the commissioners, because they had both administrative and legislative authority, mm -hmm. if they came across something that they'd done, in fact, we actually had an example of that. Yeah, no, we do. What, what happened is, is that uh, somebody retired, they had agreed to pay uh, their sick leave upon their retirement, then they didn't have the money budgeted for it. Well, the county commissioners just said, uh, we don't have the money to pay that, so we're gonna change the policy. We're gonna just do away with that policy of paying sick leave out at the time that you retire. And that caused a real frustration well, and, with the employees. And, and, that, and so I mean, that, that, that's, that's a function that you can fix with good people or good staff or, but, or a good system. But, but I guess the thing that I liked is the fact that if you have a separation of power between the executive and the legislative body, that can happen, but it doesn't just happen on a whim. It happens through a, a course of debate. Because what happens is he, he has to exercise a veto or the council just basically yeah. shuts yeah. down and You know, I've, ne I've actually never had to use a veto, but I've actually sometimes said I will veto that if you pass it. Yeah. If you separate it, then, then one branch has another branch to blame. Well, it's not my fault, it's the council's fault. It's not the council's fault, it's my fault as the executive. And they go back and forth, and when you're both, you, you only have your own hand to raise. So, I mean, it seems to me that there, there may be some value in that. And that's just well, a conjecture. But that's one of the th reasons I said you really need to have people, and, and I see the problem, I don't, want to, I don't want to discount that, but you need people that are really there to serve 
and that's their objective. They it's really the want to help people. You want they want good government. <laughs> when you're right, you elect good people. Yes. It takes good people to run good government. Yes. And I just really believe that. I think the form's highly overrated. Would would you do it again, or would you opt for it to be back? Remember, I wasn't there under the commission form of government, but I've been there for 26 years. So. I say that ours has worked fairly well. I don't want to say that it's been perfect and I don't want to acknowledge that, don't want to say that there haven't been any problems, but I think it's been good to have different people elected from different geographical areas of the county legislatively. And I don't think that they've just looked at representing their legislative district. And I think it's been good to have a separation of power. Uh, from my perspective, it's worked fairly well. I don't have the perspective from the county commission and I think that's one of the things that you you've got previous history with that that I don't. Gene what do you think? I would go back in a heartbeat to a commission. There's there's no doubt about it. I've, I've only sat on the council but I've had dealings with past commissioners in, in different counties. I would go back to it simply because it's easier and quicker to make decisions. Some people say right, right, wrong, bad decisions. You're still elected by the people. You still have to answer to the people. Randy will tell you so all in that we've been talking about it. It takes good people to run a good county. Yes. If you don't have the person, you get rid of the, that person. You know, There's ways to do it. Uh, and we was talking about going back to it. We tried just real quickly a, a couple of years ago. I've got uh, Gavin Anderson involved. We went through the whole process. There was a petition signed that went back to the voters just to study our form of government. There's, besides just a regular council and commission, you know, you got the extended ones. Then there's one that sits in the background. There's not, it's not in place in Utah. It's a consolidated, it's what I would call a form of council, where it involves the mayors of the cities and that it becomes part of that council. Wow, that's a uh, big that, legislative that council. That's awful. Okay, Randy, the last that few would, seconds, because we're, be we're running out uh, No, I, well, first of all, <laughs> let me just say, on the onset, saying our former government has cost us five times more than the commission form. When you, if you take the council and the mayor's office together and combine them together, the government is five times more expensive, not in the decisions we make, but in just the operation of the government, the staffs, and it just, it's just, it's just, Ridiculous. The best way to have really done it, Lynn, would have been, you know, maybe increased to number of county commissioners so you could have had maybe districtized county commissioners and, and you could have spread out the administrative burden more, you know, um, amongst commissioners. Plus, they would have had better um, communication with the other elected officials. That's one of the things I think I feel bad about. Is so do you think, do you, does your mayor feel that way? I mean, do they? No, do they no, he loves it. Well, he's mayor now. He loves it. Because okay. He's got 100% of the power of county government with him. Well, uh, and again, I, I, so he loves I, I, I don't want to, I, I just think that there's, I think that there's benefits and there's pros and cons on both sides. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.